To understand, uh, this one says to solve and graph the equation. Now, typically, when we're looking into solving and graphing inequalities, we typically will treat it like just solve and graph like an equation, right? And there's multiple different ways we could solve this equation. We could factor it using the difference two squares. We could add the one to the other side and then take the square root, which we call the um, square root property. So there's a couple different ways to really understand this. But the problem with solving this using, um, using an equation is it kind of, it, it doesn't really make sense as far as understanding when something's less than or equal to 0. So the better way to really understand this is to understand what that graph looks like. So hopefully, you guys are familiar with this y equals x squared. So if I was going to go y equals x squared minus 1, what that's going to be is that's going to be a horizontal transformation down 1. And from your understanding of quadratic functions, hopefully you understand that the first two points is over 1, up 1. That's just something we spent a lot of time in Algebra 1 as well as in Algebra 2 for you guys to understand. So if you look at this expression, Basically, what it's saying is, you know, when is this graph less than 0? Well, you can say it's less than 0 between negative 1 and positive 1. Right? You can see the whole graph is less than 0 when between, for the x values between negative 1 and, I'm sorry, that's positive 1, and positive 1. So if you were to graph this on an inequality, again, guys, I didn't really, this isn't something I actually would really expect from you to fully remember from algebra 1, but you could write in the Full dot, complete dot, and then it's all numbers between negative 1 and 1 that is less than 0. And again, you can make, you can, again, another way to option to do this is do a guess and check. Like, what if you plugged in 2? 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. Is 3 less than or equal to 0? No. But what about, let's just do 1 half. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 1 fourth minus 1. Don't even need to think about it. We know it's going to be negative, right? We know 1 is bigger than 1 4, so it's going to be some negative number, which is obviously less than 0. So really, anything between negative 1 and 1 is going to be less than or equal to 0. So um, that is basically what you'd want to do with that. And we'll, we'll do a lot more examples of those.